Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter here for the next 20 minutes. Uh, today we are going to be working in the membership module and we're going to be talking about visits. So a visit is something you can track within the membership module that allows you to record the date someone was visited, by whom they were visited, along with where they were visited, the reason why, and then you can also set up a follow-up date. So this is a really great way for pastors, different members of the church staff to be able to track whom they're visiting and why. You can even set up a follow-up date if you need to, if you want to check back with this person in a particular amount of time, you can set that up as well. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We probably won't use the whole 20 minutes. Um, the information that I am using to teach you guys today is from one of our workbooks. So the workbook really goes into some good detailed information on using visits in membership. So if you want some uh, written information, you can get that from our Membership 201 workbook. So M201, specifically pages 25 through 37. So if you have that workbook, want to follow along, feel free to do so. Um, if you don't have the workbook and you would like to purchase it or you would like some more information on where you can get those workbooks. Let me show you real fast. If you go to churchwindows.com, right here under beginning, training and resources, training workbooks. There's a bunch of different workbooks out here you guys can purchase. Um, it is $12 for a PDF downloadable version that you print off on your own, um, or $22. That gives you a pre-printed binder ready uh, document that we mail to you. Um, so it's up to you which option you choose, but if you scroll down, all the different workbooks that we have available, and then the contents that is included in the workbooks is going to be listed here. So again, this is optional. Like always, I'm recording this webinar, so you can re-watch it at our support center at any time for free. We have a lot of free information there. Uh, but if you would like a workbook that's specific to a topic that you need more information on, a workbook would be great for that, and you can come out here and see what's included and purchase them this way. Okay. If you have questions today specifically about visits, feel free to ask that. Um, you'll just need to go over on your GoToWebinar toolbar and expand the question section. Feel free to type in a question there. Uh, Josh is in with me today. He will give you a typed response. Um, or you can wait till the end of the presentation. We'll do a little q and I'll read the question aloud and get you an answer that way. So you can ask it while I'm presenting, but I won't address it till the end unless Josh gives you an answer. Okay. Again, if you come up with anything after the webinar um, or you have a really specific question about your data that you want to talk to us about, just call us. Give us a call on our support line or you can email us to support at churchwindows.com. We'll give you a call back and then we can help you with your question that way as well. Okay. All right. Let's get started. So I opened up membership for you. There's two ways you can get into the visits section in our software. Right up here at the top. You can click visits with a little plant or down here in the middle, there's also a visits option. The two buttons take you to the exact same place, so it doesn't matter which one you click. And I'm going to go ahead and open up visits for you. So as you can see quickly at a glance on this screen, we have four visits that I entered just as a little prep here for you guys. So you can see quickly who's been visited and how many times as soon as you open up this screen. Okay, we're going to talk about that more in a minute. First, we're going to talk about setting up your visits. So the different criteria or things that you want to track when someone has a visit. All right, to do that, I'm going to go right up here to add visit. This is actually the new visit screen. So if you're going to track a visit on someone, you'll go here, which again, I'll show you in a minute. But I want to show you how to set up the fields that are specific to your church or your organization. Okay. So over here on the right, you have a visited by field, a location field, and a reason field. These fields are going to be customized to your church or your organization and what you need, okay? 
So let's talk about visited by here. If I hit the little pencil, this allows me to edit this field, and it's going to show me the people that are going to be doing the visits. Okay, so visited by, who is going to visit these people? There are some default fields in here, secretary, deacon, nurse, senior pastor, or a welcome committee member. You can delete them if you want, or you can add new ones up here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and add a new one, and I'm going to call it AP Assistant Pastor, and then I'm just going to hit Add. All right, so you can add or create as many of these visited by codes as you need or you see fit for your organization, all right? Once these are all set up, you can close out of here, and then I suggest moving on to the location. So these are going to be the different places or locations you are going to visit people, all right? So church, home, hospital, nursing facility, and other. Again, you can add up here at the top using code description, just like I showed you, as many of these as you wish, all right? And then once you go to track your different visits, you'll be able to reuse these codes, all right? Close out of here, and then we have our reason field. So this is going to be why are we visiting these people? Okay, so along with who visited them, where they were visited, we're also going to track why. Why are we tracking this visit for this person? All right, over to the right, hit your little pencil again. And here are some different codes in here that have been set up. So again, you customize this, you fit the reasons why you are having visits. I am going to add a new one that I think is pretty important here. Just going to call it B, description, new baby. My pastor always visited me when I had my new kids. Came to the hospital, met me and my husband. It was lovely. So I want to put new baby in here, okay? So I'm going to add the code, add the description, hit add, and now that is a code that is available for you to track. All right? Close out of here. Over here on the left, let's talk about these different fields. The person, this is going to be who is getting the visit, okay? Date, when they were visited, how long the visit was for, a follow-up date. So I wanna talk about follow-up date for a minute because this is really, really important. So you can put in, if you need to go visit this person in a month, or you need to go visit them in two weeks, whatever it might be, you can enter a date, either typing it in or using the calendar, and specifying when you need to see that person again, all right? This little calendar button is super handy. It's a, it's a follow-up calculator. So you could say, I need to see this person in 14 days, and then it's gonna calculate how many days, what's the date in 14 days, that's a better way to say it, which is really handy. So you say, I need to go back in two weeks, put 14 days in, boom, there's your date, okay? Now, once you get a date in here, you have this checkbox that says add event to scheduler. If you utilize our scheduler module, this is a way to set a reminder for you when you open up the software. Scheduler will see you have an event today and it's gonna give you an alert, okay? Really, really handy feature. I don't think a lot of people utilize, um, but if you have scheduler, this is a great way to help you say, hey, pastor, you're supposed to be going and meeting so-and-so or call somebody and say, hey, you're supposed to be checking up on them. Really handy tool to help people remember they need to follow up with someone, okay? Comments field, again, this is just an open text box. You can type in here whatever you need to. If you want to put notes about the visit, that can be done here. Also, these comments are typed up. They're going to be able to show up on a report later if you need to generate a report. So comments can be really beneficial as a reminder of where you went or maybe even what you talked about, what you prayed over. You can track that here, okay? Now, the lower half of the screen, this says copy visit to. When you enter a visit, which again we'll do in a minute, you those that visit, I should say, is specific to the person that you selected up here. Okay? So this visit will be tracked for that person. But you have the option to copy that information on either all family members, just the primary and secondary person, or just the children only. So this is a way for you to track that visit for the family or for parts of the family globally, okay? So you're able to put this information on other people, copy the information to them, 
All right, and then you also have some checkup boxes over here. Do you want to include the comments and do you want to include the follow-up date if you put one in? All right, pretty handy. So that is an overview of entering a visit and what the different fields do. Let's actually walk through putting in a visit, okay? So start from the beginning, come right into visits. You can choose your person here and then hit add visit or you can just hit add visit and then choose your person. One way isn't different or they're different but one isn't better than the other I should say. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hit add visit and I'm gonna go ahead and select someone to put a visit on. We're gonna do Bill. We're gonna say that Bill was visited on August 16th. We'll say the visit just lasted 15 minutes. It wasn't very long. We're going to go over here and we're going to do a visited by. I'm going to put senior pastor. Location, I'm going to say hospital. Again, if you go to select something, it's not here. Hit that pencil. You can create a new location. Reason, hospital. Okay. If you have a follow-up date, let's say Bob is due to get out the hospital in three days. Let's say we want to follow up with him. Well, it's in the past. We'll say he gets out tomorrow. We'll follow up with him tomorrow. Check that date there. And then if you wish to add comments, you can do so. Why we visited him. Say he had um, open heart surgery and we want to check back on him. You could type that in here if you wanted to. Okay. Also copy visit to. It's up to you if you want to include this information on other family members. For this, I'm going to say do not copy, and I'm going to say OK. So now that visit has been added to this list of all of my previous visits I've tracked so far. OK? Very simple to put in a visit. Let's talk about utilizing this screen here. If you want to adjust the layout of this screen, you can. Me personally, I like the way this screen is laid out. I think this is the most informative way for this screen to set up, um, but you do have the option to come in here and hit change dates, filter, and sort. You can come in here and you can change what is being shown on the visit screen. All right, you can adjust the date range. You can say you just want members. Very, very similar <clears throat> layout if you're used to working in browse donations or browse uh, transactions and accounting. But you can customize this screen. You can go to the Columns tab and you can specify what information you want to see. If you never type comments in or you never put in a follow-up date, you can move those fields off to the left and that will exclude them from showing up on the report or on this visit screen, I should say. Group and sort. By default, this screen is going to be sorted by the person and then the date. If you would rather have it in date order, sort field one, switch that to date, sort field two, then you can switch that to person. Again, this is not required. You don't have to come in here and change it, but if you have a very specific way you want to view this screen, you can come here in here and you can make those changes. Okay. Now, keep in mind, whatever way you have this, this filter set up, when you come in to run a report and you hit print, this print button up here is going to print exactly how you have this screen set up, okay? So if I hit print, it's going to give me the information on this screen as well as their address and their phone number, okay? Very basic report of your visits that you have so far. If you just want to see a report for one person's visit history, Oops, type that person's name here. Filter will change and just show you that information. Let's say I want to go back into filter and sort. I don't care to see the address on the report or the phone number on the report. I'm going to say OK. Hit print. And then there's my report of all my visits just for Bill Bell. OK, now let's clear this filter. And let's go back to this. Let's talk about um, editing the screen. So let's say you have something entered here for Nina, and you realize that when this was entered, visited by, she wasn't actually visited by the secretary. She was visited by the welcome committee member. If that's the case, you simply just click in this box and you change it. 
All right, there's no save here. You don't have to hit refresh. You can if something isn't updating properly, but simply clicking in each of these boxes is gonna allow you the ability to change the information. Say you forgot to put in a follow-up date, you can click right here on this field and update it right on this screen. It allows you to change it like a grid. If you find you have an event in here that you don't need, you need to get rid of it, that little minus sign here off to the right, that's going to allow you to delete the visit. Okay, now I know we talked about printing here right from the visit screen. You can also print from the reports and exports option up here at the top. It's going to function the same way. All right, so if we close here, I'm gonna say no, I don't wanna schedule it for scheduler. Reports and export, visits. It's going to take us to that same screen we saw earlier when I clicked that change dates, filter and sort button. It's going to allow me to choose my date range, choose my person, I can exclude visitors. However you wish to do it, I can get rid of these fields again if I wanted to, change my group or sort, hit print. It's going to give me that same report that we got earlier from the visit screen. Same report, two different ways to get to it. Again, you can really go in and customize this. You won't break anything. You can come in here um, and you can set it up however you wish. One more thing I want to touch on in people. Um, it's a pretty handy tool. I don't think a lot of people know it's there. Um, you can get maps or directions from your church windows simply by clicking this little pin icon. So say someone, pastor's going to visit Bill. He's home, let's say, from the hospital. We're gonna search for Bill. Here's Bill's record. You can hit this little pin map family and it will give you directions from your church address to his address. Okay, you can say get directions. It's going to connect out to Google Maps and then it's going to do that. It's going to give you the directions from the church address to Bill's address, okay? Obviously, this is Church Windows address and this isn't a real place, but this allows you to quickly print off a map. I know everybody's got their smartphones and can put their address in there, but some people like the old school printouts. If that's the case, you can quickly come in here as long as you're connected up to the internet. It's gonna take you out to Google Maps and give you that address, which is a really handy feature. All right, that is everything that I wanted to show you all today in regards to visits.